Welcome back. Hi everyone. In the last session on medical nutrition therapy of diabetes, we did see the overview about diabetes and how global epidemic of diabetes and the diagnosis uh, needed criteria and who are at risk for type 2 diabetes and type 1 diabetes and so on and the growing gestational diabetic uh, mellitus in pregnant women in our country. We had seen the importance of all these followed by the pathophysiology and various types and with that we ended the session with the pathophysiology of type 1, type 2 and gestational. So in continuation to that as I told you in the previous session it is important for us to learn to prevent or manage diabetes and if we do not do either of them those who cannot prevent diabetes will end up having diabetes and those who develop diabetes if you do not manage diabetes they will end up having complications. So today's class we are mainly going to focus about the complications of diabetes that are in store if a person fails to handle diabetes very well. And so at the end of this class the important objectives we should have accomplished is to know the two main complications acute and chronic and what are the various subtypes list the subtypes of complications and how the able to discuss in detail the macrovascular complication which has got more of nutrition relevance at the end of the class. Now we will move to complications the importance big picture why complication are we complicating ourselves is it not now we have understood enough about diabetes why not we stop at that. So you should know that diabetes is a chronic disease it does not happen overnight uh, as a chronic disease and hence one need to control one has to live with 24 by 7 into 365 days in year after year of living with diabetes. So being a chronic disease need to control if uncontrolled both acute and chronic complication that affects almost every systems of the body. So what are the acute complications of uh, diabetes? Acute complications meaning its immediate onset of diabetes. It is so acute the very word says instant, instantaneously the problems. So the most important complications are hypoglycemia. The very word says hypo means low blood glucose. It is an acute and diabetes ketoacidosis which means a coma you must have heard especially young children coming to a hospital getting admitted with very high blood sugar and dehydrated and so on which we will be studying more in detail subsequently now and this is diabetic ketoacidosis so a lot of ketone bodies are developed and hyper or smaller hyperglycemic state which is HSS teen in type 2 diabetic people very uh, rarely. And chronic complication the very word says they are chronic is all the pathies retinopathy the meaning affecting the retina of the eye which is a microvascular small vessel and nephropathy affecting the kidneys is again a microvascular and neuropathy affecting the nerves and whereas the cardiovascular the large vessels are cardiovascular and peripheral vascular disease affecting the large blood vessels of the disease of the body. Acute complications of diabetes as I told you its most common acute ones are hypos, diabetic ketoacidosis and hyper or smaller hyperglycemic state. Now let us study hypoglycemia has got more relevance to nutritionists and dietitians with regards to management when you see in the next section. It is a low blood sugar common acute complication. It is normally due to side effect of treatment for patient especially with insulin or sulfonylurea drugs a type of class of diabetic drug. The exact values of blood glucose are not clear and it is always in the range of 55, 50 to 65 and American Diabetes Association defines if the blood sugar values drops less than 70 milligram then it is called hypoglycemia. Avoidance of low blood glucose is very critical factor to manage diabetes and this can limit supply of glucose and neural tissue. In the last class I told you brain can utilize pure glucose if there is no glucose it is going to cognition and eventually coma. It accounts for almost 4 percent death and hypoglycemia may be caused by excess dosage of insulin or vigorous uh, exercise or skipping meals, inadequate food and blood glucose level falls too low people experience shakiness, nervousness, irritability, hang, hunger, palpitation, 
dehydration all related symptoms and immediate sometimes ingestion of glucose or candy or juice or chocolate can help them to overcome hyperglycemia. Inbuilt defense mechanism, the how the body reacts. Now externally we react by popping glucose and candies and so on. How the body react to the hypoglycemic, the defense mechanism, first matching with the falling blood glucose, insulin secretion automatically will go down, followed by release of counter regulatory hormones, mainly glucagon and epinephrine. Glucagon release glucose by breaking down from glycogen in the liver and from gluconeogenesis. I am sure you all must have studied in your biochemistry chapters. Epinephrine release glucose by promoting lipolysis in adipose tissue and how and proteolysis in skeletal muscle. Hormones like cortisol and growth hormone are also uh, act in the case of prolonged hypoglycemia. There is something called reactive hypoglycemia which is postprandial hypoglycemia. It does not happen due to skipping meals but it happens after eating the person's blood sugar falls terribly low and when the food intake is that is what is reactive hypoglycemia and similarly nocturnal hypoglycemia is lack of basal supply of insulin with longer hours of fasting between meals and they it disturbs their sleep during sleep they go into low blood glucose and diabetic ketoacidosis is a reversible but a life threatening condition occurs in patients with type 1 diabetes and but rarely in type 2 diabetes. This occurs due to severe insulin deficiency and insulin action and combined with increased release of counter regulatory hormones, metabolism of carbohydrates, protein and fat all are altered. As a result of insufficient insulin, body uses fat as an source of energy and increases breakdown of fat and individuals develops large amount of fat breakdown products called ketones, acetone, acetone are produced and accumulate in the bloodstream. If decay is not untreated, if it is not in time, it can lead to coma and death. The term ketoacidosis includes all the disorder associated with the increased breakdown of fat, ketosis, ketonemia, ketonuria, it meaning in urine and in blood. The insulin deficiency lipogenesis decreases and lipolysis increases. The fatty acids are liberated from broken down from adipose tissue available by adsorption from the intestinal tract or bodies including acetoastic acid, beta hydroxybutyric acid and acetone. These fatty acids are used by the liver and released into the circulation. So acetone is excreted by the lungs and causes fruity odor to the breath. Acetone, acetoastic acid are excreted in order to maintain electrical neutrification and anion, ketone bodies are eliminated and increases electrolyte depletion. Excessive production of ketone bodies leads to a condition called acidosis where the blood pH is lowered, ketones being strong organic acids, it combines with the base and leads to alkaline reserve depletion and results in acidosis. As we had seen most of the symptoms which are summarized here, hyperventilation meaning to say quick fast breath, dehydration due to the osmolar difference and bad breath, fatigue. They also have like a general symptom of excess thirst and urination and confusion due to lack of uh, glucose reaching the cells for utilization. Chronic complications are long term complications. As the term denotes chronic suggests that it results after years of uncontrolled diabetes or the complication may not be uh, may not be reversed at all to some extent. Diabetes increases the risk by two to four folds for a person to develop cardiovascular disease like coronary artery disease and stroke. Diabetes is one of the leading causes for the end stage renal disease and blindness and lower limb amputation all of preventable had the diabetes been well controlled. Complications of chronic nature could be of two types, macrovascular and microvascular which initially I said that and macro meaning large vessel and micro meaning small vessels. However, both macro and microvascular complications have similar pathophysiology. Both are prone to oxidative damage due to uncontrolled high blood glucose over a longer period of time resulting in plaque formation and narrowing the lumen of both small and large vessel causing ischemia or death of the tissues in the organ and 
this alters the cell function as a result of non enzymatic reaction of glucose with protein a reactive component called advanced glycation end products ages are formed in individual with diabetes ages accumulate at too high level and alter the structure of protein and blood vessel elevated glucose in the blood increases the production and accumulation of sorbitol and increase oxidative stress and damage the molecular structure and function of the cell so these complications can be averted by optimal glycosylated glucose control with hba1c of less than 7% and this was very evident in many large intervention trials like dcct diabetes complications control trial in type 1 and UK prospective diabetes study, UK PDS, very popular studies. And now we will see the two types of chronic complication. The macrovascular is more predominantly uh, prevalent and it happens both with people with diabetes and as well as complication in non-diabetic. But here we are going to talk only today about the macrovascular with the diabetic people and this has got so much of nutrition relevance in the next module when you study about the diet in type 1 and diet in type 2 diabetes this has got this pathophysiology this background about complication is very very important so the macrovascular disease include coronary artery disease cerebrovascular disease like stroke and peripheral vascular disease it is a clinical endpoint of atherosclerosis Initial stages of macrovascular disease involves both structural and functional alteration in the arteries. Arterial stiffness and flow mediated dilatation are the first functional changes resulting in loss of elasticity and foam cell formation leads to thickening of intima, then plaque formation and clogging which interferes with the blood flow. Imagine it is like a, a pipeline from the water tank is like a heart and the pipeline if the water does not flow well, if there is a clog in the pipeline, when you open the tap, you may see that you are not getting enough water. It is the same analogy applies with the plaque formation blocking in the blood vessel, so the blood circulation can be obstructive. So macrovascular disease is the most common cause of death in individuals with diabetes and it accounts for two to four times higher risk for death compared to those without diabetes. Diabetes as a disease itself poses an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease compared to type 1 diabetes. People with type 2 diabetes are at a higher risk. Metabolic syndrome and metabolic uh, cluster not only associated with insulin resistance but also with type 2 diabetes which include this metabolic syndrome includes a dyslipidemia which is a low HDL, a good uh, lipoprotein is low and an ugly cholesterol high triglycerides more plus hypertension and abdominal obesity if a person has any of the three in this is called to have a metabolic syndrome coronary artery disease tells you the arteries that supply to the heart itself when this plaque formation blocks then the heart which is supposed to nourish the whole system but heart also needs nourishment it doesn't get it as you can see the darker color which is the patch that so shows the ischemia of the heart which is the dying muscle in the bottom if you can see in the figure then coronary artery disease is the top killer 80 percent of all death in diabetic subjects studies have reported that coronary artery disease are developed even in pre-diabetes stage and at the time of diagnosis itself in pre-diabetes so coronary artery disease like myocardial infarction and angina and sudden death with diabetes and it decreases eight years of life expectancy Premenopausal age gives a protection however this protection goes in the postmenopausal stage for women so hence women are equally at risk postmenopausally as that's with the men asian indians are more vulnerable to coronary artery disease and it occurs a couple of decades earlier at an younger age when they are in productive age than those in the western countries from an epidemiological study uh, Chennai urban population study has shown a prevalence of 11 percent observed in how urban adults in Chennai which is 10 times more than in 1970 so the coronary artery disease in Indian study report caddy have shown that Asian Indians also have a unique high levels of lipoprotein A and it is a strong independent risk factor for CAD risk in type 2 diabetes study from Framingham on diabetic men and women revealed a four-fold higher risk of the disease and development of coronary atherosclerosis has shown to be initiated 
many years even before the clinical manifestations of CAD occur. Functional changes in arteries increases arterial stiffness or loss of elasticity and influence cardiovascular diagno diagnosis. The Bogalusa heart study report suggests the LPA is a biomarker for CAD in adulthood. Other risk factors for the development of coronary artery disease in addition to that are age which is an independent risk factor, sex, high level LDL, low level HDL, hypertension, hyperglycemia and low grade inflammation and genetic susceptibility are the other factors. Overall, the metabolic syndrome and insulin resistance, vulnerability and association with the type 2 diabetes predisposes Asian Indians to enhanced coronary artery disease risk. So, as I have told you, just see the illustrated summary. Now, you can see the normal blood vessel where the blood flow on the left hand side and on the right hand side, you can see the atheromatous yellow deposition inside the blood vessel which decrease the lumen, the cavity. So, the amount of blood can flow through this becomes restricted and in a cross sectional you can see that how the blood is with the plaque is becoming an obstruction to the entire blood vessel. Now, the second major cause is the cerebrovascular disease complication and stroke is a very important risk factor uh, for diabetes and is very common. Study has reported diabetes is a major reason and it is the third commonest cause of death and stroke and hospital death in Indians in India. Death rate due to stroke is two times higher in individuals with diabetes compared to those who do not have diabetes. Again, a Chennai urban population cup study from Chennai has shown that the prevalence rate of cerebral vascular disease was uh, 1.3. Prevention is the most effective strategy than other modalities of treatment and recovery like surgical and medical therapy. To arrest this alarmingly high rate of stroke, lifestyle modification such as dietary habits to eat less salt and fat in addition to control blood pressure and diabetes, cessation of smoking and chewing tobacco also to be stressed upon. Now the next is peripheral vascular disease and other macrovascular complication which itself tells you periphery. The blood vessel supplying to the peripheral areas refer to a, a gradual decline in the flow of blood to one or more of the limbs and is a major risk factor for the lower extremity amputation. Many studies have proven that the risk for PVD is higher among patients with diabetes. PVD is more commonly seen in patients with diabetes. In CUP study has also shown the prevalence rate is going up to 6.3 percent in patients with diabetes is generally asymptomatic and coexisting neuropathy may mask PVD and hence regular screening by physical examination and Doppler examination is warranted to identify people with PVD. Now the common risk factors for all this macro complication vessel complications are dyslipidemia. Individuals with prolonged uncontrolled glycemia are at a higher risk for the prevalence of dyslipidemia. In patients with type 2 diabetes, elevated cholesterol was seen almost in 34 percent and triglyceride was 5 to 14 percent and low HDL levels. Patients with type 2 have a smaller and denser LDL particles which increase atherogenicity further. Now, the second next risk factor is hypertension is common to not only to macro even to micro vascular complication. Prevalence of hypertension is higher among diabetic patient. It is like a twins diabetes and hypertension you can say. It is one of the most common comorbidity seen in individuals. Almost 73 percent of diabetic patients have elevated blood pressure and it is independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Um, Hypertension is a major risk factor for metabolic syndrome, coronary artery disease, cerebrovascular disease and ca general cardiovascular disease. Our age again, high salt intake, obesity, excess consumption of alcohol and periodic blood pressure monitoring will help to prevent the micro and macrovascular complication. Now we will finish with the macrovascular complication. We will now move on to microvascular complication which uh, deals with a disorder that affect the small blood vessels and capillaries like retina of the eye itself is small and the blood supplying to the retina is very thin. So also kidney you must have studied in your physiology the blood vessels that supply to the kidney due to mainly poor glycemic control of diabetes. Microvascular complications 
by and large are mainly due to poor control of diabetes and hence typically in patients with diabetes whereas macrovascular complications have more people with diabetes even in a non-diabetic people it can be applied it can affect also and microvascular the diabetic nephropathy which is diagnosed if the patient with the diabetes has persistent proteinuria of greater than 500 milligram per day with coexisting diabetic retinopathy and hypertension retinopathy which will be studying very soon and other renal disease absence in the absence of other renal disease and longevity of diabetes now and the longer duration probably allows these complications to occur in people with diabetes diabetic patients are at higher risk 17 times more risk for nephropathy than without in type 1 this is the most important cause for morbidity and almost double the number of patients with type 1 reach end stage renal disease or ESRD than type 2 diabetes. The peak onset in type 1 diabetes is 10 to 15 years. The earliest stage of kidney disease due to diabetes poor control is microalbuminuria and with appropriate timely intervention correction if you pick up at microalbuminuria level this nephropathy can itself be reversed. So globally diabetic nephropathy occur in patients having diabetes over a longer period of time and is a leading cause for ESRD. One third of both type 1 and type 2 patients are affected by nephropathy. It is characterized by thickening of capillary membrane causes glomerular nephrosis a kidney disease which affects filtration and hence excess protein is leaky protein in the urine that is why it is called proteinuria and finally leads to renal failure and tight control of blood sugar level and blood pressure and could prevent the progression further. If we have a good control of blood pressure we can prevent and you would have seen people with the nephropathy with the renal failure uh, obviously going in for the dialysis further. In general the common risk factors that cause nephropathy include hypertension, hyperglycemia, dyslipidemia and sometimes urinary tract infection. In the picture you can see the glomeruli and how the filtration gets uh, disturbed can be the causes. The risk factors, longer duration, family history, in addition ethnicity and male gender are more vulnerable, cigarette smoking and hyperlipidemia. Presence of microalbuminuria and proteinuria indicates poor prognosis in pregnancy and predispose the women to preeclampsia is another complication in uh, pregnancy due to diabetes and due to changes in the kidney. This could further affect and increase the neonatal mortality, congenital malformation and increased caesarean section rates. Efficient ways to manage diabetic nephropathy include optimize blood pressure first and blood glucose control screen all type 2 diabetic patients annually for microalbuminuria and creatinine. Reduction of protein intake if the damage is there in the kidney which can prevent further progression to uh, prevent proteinuria. The next microvascular complication is diabetic retinopathy and diabetic nephropathy what we finished has got more relevance to nutrition you will find as compared to diabetic retinopathy but there are more studies emerging as we see in the next module when we talk about diet and diabetes management. Diabetic retinopathy a new onset of blindness more common among adults in the developed countries but now it started to grow even in developing countries too with type 1 and type 2 it affects both of them. Epidemiological study shows that after 15 years duration of diabetes almost all type 1 and 75 percent of type 2 diabetes will develop diabetic retinopathy. Diabetes is the major cause for visual disability and blindness due to macular edema and in India the Chennai urban rural epidemiological study cures from South India was the first to showcase in our country the prevalence of diabetes retinopathy 17.6 percent one in five adults in urban as against the developed nations like US having 50 percent and UK with 34 percent and the onset of diabetes is higher rates in patients with early onset of diabetes it seen 
46 percent than type 1 diabetes indicating the aggressive nature of the retinopathy setting in in early onset diabetes so due to higher absolute number of people with diabetes in india i think the absolute numbers of diabetic retinopathy though the percentage is lesser the absolute numbers are going to be a more and it will cause an increase in burden diabetic retinopathy is primarily grouped into two types subtypes non proliferative diabetic retinopathy npdr earlier it used to be called as simple or background retinopathy now it is npdr and proliferative diabetic retinopathy so diabetic retinopathy is a disorder microangiopathy and it has got both microvascular occlusion meaning block and microvascular leakage of the retina that's why the capillaries from retina bleed and sometimes they have to be treated immediately to prevent the blindness the other cause of visual impairment diabetic retinopathy is proliferative retinopathy where there may be a sudden vitreous hemorrhage which i said the leakage from the unstable new vessels resulting in total or partial virtual loss or from pre retinal hemorrhage or fibrosis or traction at the macula curcumin is one of the very popular bioactive component in our ancient spices turmeric had shown to inhibit proliferation of retinal endothelial cells in vivo a study from the chennai and the next microvascular is diabetic neuropathy it affects every alternate diabetic person 50% of diabetic subjects have neuropathy is a common cause of morbidity and mortality posing a huge economic burden not only to families but also to the society it affects both type 1 and type 2 the mechanism two mechanisms one is the damage to the outer protective layer of the neuron by uncontrolled blood glucose and secondly damaging the tiny blood vessels over a longer period so the blood circulation is affected diabetic patients with foot problems incur four times higher cost than a diabetic without foot problems diabetic neuropathy is a silent complication of diabetes because it often develops without symptoms neuropathy is also considered as a strong risk factor for secretive uh, secretive complications of diabetes and erectile dysfunction so the neuropathy can have an impact on that so and we have come to this conclusion of the complications so today we have went through with the two types of complications acute and chronic and under acute we emphasized more to learn about the hypoglycemia you know what are the features and how important what consequences if not treated you must have learned it and uh, diabetes ketoacidosis coma under chronic complications we have further subdivided macrovascular and microvascular complications and macrovascular we read about uh, coronary artery disease and uh, stroke and peripheral vascular disease and micro affecting the retina of the eye retinopathy and nephropathy so these all complications background is very important for us as a nutritionist or as a dietitian when you go to plan the medical nutrition therapy keeping in mind the consequences and the pathophysiology of this complication how through diet means we can improve or prevent further progression of the severity so this is called the secondary and tertiary prevention having got diabetes how to prevent complication or having got diabetes with complication how to further worsen how to prevent worsening of the complication is very important which through a diet or medical nutrition therapy means will be our focus in the next module when we when we are going to talk about diet and diabetes management both in type 1 and type 2